Welcome to this week's Powerhouse. On this week's show, we've got all this. Coming up on this week's Powerhouse, two likely lads from Sheffield show us that they've gone the full multi on their modded motors, and they take us through the thrills and spills of being in a car club. Dave Greenwood gets lost around a mini that's more entertaining than Blackpool Pleasure Beach on a hot day. Lovely. We've got a couple of Volkswagens to show you now. The first one is owned by Nick. Nick, welcome to the show. Hello. We were going to open the bonnet for you, but Nick says it looks better down, so we won't bother. Nick, we're going to have to start at the front. I mean, there's a yeah. lot of work going on there. Eyebrow spoilers and D-badge grill. Will you show me through it? Yeah. The eyebrows are from Germany, and uh, this grill spoiler is as well. The grill is standard, but the section's been cut out, and another section put in it to D-badge it. How and the grill was that to do? Not bad. The grill spoiler was a lot harder because it had a scoop out over it where the Volkswagen sign was. Right. I had to fill that scoop and, and smooth it all the way across. That was a real pain, that. Yeah, well, it's a nice job, that. Nice yeah. finish to it. Um, this is off of a Golf VR6. That's had about four inches cut out of the middle <laughs> and shut back together again and re-bent <laughs> round the corner. Right. So, I mean, there's a lot of work on this front end. How much work would you reckon you've put in? Oh, hours. Hours, I wouldn't like to say. Too Just much time in the garage? Yes, far too much time. <laughs> And this is a full splitter with corner splitters. I made it myself, that uh, wraps around. And these gold grills here are actually the windows out of Portal Hoos. <laughs> I found on a mountain bike mission once in Wales, so. I don't know whether you should have told me that. <laughs> <laughs> what so did you make anything. the front splitter out of? These are actually corner splitters of fiberglass. Right. And this strip along here is UPVC, all bonded together and filled and smoothed over and just self tapped straight underneath the chin spoiler. Next uh, time I need some work done, I'm coming to you. You've done a great job with that. I'm really fine, impressed. Fine, fine. I've got to move along the car. I mean, there's a, you know, really, it, there's a lot done to it, but it still looks very standard. It's, yeah, you know, yeah, it's that's nice why I've tried conversion. to keep it. Tried to keep it. I didn't want to go over the top with it. Uh, I mean, these are 17 inch wheels, 17 by seven, Team Dynamics. And I've had to have all the arches ripped out and rolled and flared so they actually fit underneath because there were no way they were, they were going to fit. And it's supposed to be 13 inch wheels, what's on a polo, but I managed to get away with 17s. I, yeah, I mean, that's fabulous. I mean, uh, do you have turning problems? Are your turning circles short on again? Uh, yeah, a little bit. You get, it sticks on full lock, but when you're on full lock, you're only going about one mile an hour anyway, so well, yeah. you get away with it. I mean, you should right. be going any quicker. Clear well, lenses front and on the side as well. They're Polo GLX uh, clear front, and these are Golf GTI smoke side repeaters. Do they fit right on the side yeah, repeaters? Yeah, direct replacement, yeah. yeah. I didn't look like there was any work done on that. No, they're straight swap then. If we come to the interior, I mean, yeah, again, still looking quite standard, but it's... Yeah, it's yeah. actually, this is the, the CL model, but the in full interior is the GLX. It's all the seats, carpets, door panels and dashboard are all out of the GLX Polo, the top at range Polo. Right, I mean, there's a lot of carbon detailing in there yeah. as well. I mean, I bet yeah. that's taking hours to do. Yeah, very painstaking. And uh, the, silver, uh, <laughs> the silver paint effect, yeah. that's great. Yeah. It's just uh, aluminium spray paint from DIY shops. So you just ripped them out and sprayed them up? Yeah, other day. Too much, too much time on my hands, I think, but uh, yeah. <laughs> effective, it does work, it does the job. Don't say it's wrong, but I think you need to get out more now. I know. <laughs> <laughs> many, many people have said that. <laughs> many people. And there's a lovely gear gator there as well. I mean, it's not yeah. close to the paintwork, but I mean, it's I know, very the, distinctive. Yeah. 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 And Fantastic. the floor mats, the al al aluminium floor mats as well. I just made them. Yeah. Did you just find the sheet or did you have to go and buy it? And come uh, it? Well, virtually everybody I know has got these in the car at the moment, so. It's just uh, an ongoing thing, everybody gets them in. Do you Easy do it for your mates? Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, why not? I have the job of doing that. Hey, make money out of them. Yep. And I yep. like the nice little door pins as well, yep. sprayed up the same. Same spread, colour coded door handles. Right, with a well. nice carbon fibre effect on the lock. I mean, yeah. That's very nice. Yeah. I and mean, it's fantastic, all the way down to these little lenses at the back, green lenses. Yeah. These are actually, they were first pair in England. They were imported uh, from Germany um, last about a year ago now I've had them. There's quite a few of them knocking about now, but these were the first ones in. Do you have any trouble from the police with them? I mean... No, they're actually legal, but the reflector in them is green. If you catch red lights <laughs> on, it reflects green, so they give you little uh, red reflectors you're supposed to stick on your bumpers, but... You didn't like They must them. have fallen off on way because I'm sure they were on when I set off. <laughs> sure they were. That's, that was nice, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> now, it's a very Euro look on the back. It's very plain, yeah. all de-badged all round. The, I've taken the badge out on the number plate and, and filled it all, smooth tailgate. As far as I know, there's only the one Polo in England that's got a smooth tailgate. And it's same colour and it's got the same lights. 
Yeah, whether, enough, he's, yeah. whether he's seen me or not, I don't know, but, uh, <laughs> but I did this quite a while ago. You've set a trend there, mate. Yeah, yeah, as usual. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> a huge twin exhaust down at the yeah, bottom as well. Yeah, that's actually Jetex. That, as well, imported from Germany. Right. Um, it's got a really good tone to it, really good. And I made this myself, a little Perspex thing for the number plate with... I've moved the lights from there, under there. They're actually Fiat Panda number plate <laughs> lights in there. <laughs> Fiat, ooh, Fiat, I said it, Fiat. I said I weren't going to say that. Oh, uh, well, you know, the panda had to come in useful for something one day, yeah. didn't it? One day, at least. Anyway, inside here is yet another terrific install. Who did this? Uh, me, again. Too much time on my hands. Yeah, you're a bit handy, aren't That's you, really? really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll remember you next time we've got yeah. a project going on. It's, um, it's, it doesn't sound over the top good. I've done it mainly just for looks, at the shows and stuff like that to yeah. uh, attract people's attention. I mean, I've got that... Uh, that's a 300 watt amp, that's a 200 watt amp, powering this 12 inch and these two eights. Uh, Subwoofers. Yeah, uh, subs, Rockford and Long Mill. A little map there showing you all the, the routes, little badges, <laughs> and actually a false floor. So you can still get to your spare wheel? Yeah, spare wheel's still under there. Fantastic. What's the next thing for this car, Nick? I've actually got a full set of uh, uh, Polo 16 valve bumpers for it. They're like about that deep, and I've recessed a number plate in them, but uh, I've not got around to painting them yet, so they hopefully be on in the next couple of weeks. Right. Uh, anything else apart from that? Uh, no, besides uh, one day I'll get a bigger engine for it. <laughs> but What's stopping you doing that? The many, many points on my driving licence. Oh, dear. But, no, uh, we'll boy. not go into that. We'll not no, go into we that. won't go into that. Nick, thank you very much for bringing okay, the car along. Thank you. Cheers. We'll speak later. And, uh, but one of your mates has brought his golf along over there, and Dave's over there having a look, so uh, go on. That's right, Nino's brought his car along to show us. It's a Mark III Golf. Now, Nino, this doesn't look standard, although it's still quite subtle. What's gone down at the back here? Right, I've uh, got the coloured headlamps, rear, rear lights. Uh, I've got 1998 smooth bumpers. The number plates have been done with the VW logo inside. Nice. Uh, Four inch tailpipe exhaust system with a two and a half inch bore all the way through. Right, and uh, is that pretty much it for the back of the car? It then? is indeed, yeah. What about if we move our way down? These wheels are really nice. Yeah, deep dish Porsche Cup alloys. What size are they? Uh, the 7B15. Yeah, so you've gone for the like the Euro. I have, yeah. The smaller look. Yeah. Nice, and these, these side skirts obviously are. BMW standard. M3 side skirts. Right, yeah. And is, uh, what about these, these repeaters there at the yeah, side? Yeah, smoke repeaters and smoke from the indicator as well. And they're the same, just pop straight in. They pop straight in and out, yeah. Great stuff. Well, now we get to the front, and there's, uh, this is where most of the modifications take place as far as styling goes on the, uh, on the body. What's uh -huh. gone down here then? Well, I've got a D badge grill, mm -hmm. uh, the bumper vents. Right, yeah. The twin headlight conversion. And that's about it for the front. Was it the same kind of trouble you had there? Uh... No, 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 I didn't do the same as Nick. I just bought mine. <laughs> right, got you. <laughs> now, uh, what about actually, yeah, this is where the, the good stuff is, if it you is. want to get that up. So we've got a diesel. Diesel, turbo diesel, direct injection diesel. Right, what kind of brake horse are you running uh, on? We're running 150 brake horsepower with 240 pound of torque. That is not bad at all. And what kind of stuff have you had to do to get that then? Uh, had to change the turbo, it's got twin intercoolers, air filter, uh, and an extra ECU for more fuel. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, taken quite a bit of time then, I imagine, it to get did, all that did, yeah, it took out. two months. Two months? Two months. And what are you going to go for next? I mean, does it need any improvement? Oh, yeah, we're going for more development with the head. Uh, we're having it ported and polished and hopefully a cam inside. Right. And more internals. And what's that going to do for you? Uh, hopefully run it up to 190 brake horsepower. Really? Mm-hmm. That's going to be unbelievable. Yeah. What kind of speed will, uh, will that go then? Uh, it'll do not 16 sub 7. Really? Mm-hmm. That's outstanding. And probably a top speed of 130 plus. That's but with good. a fuel consumption of uh, 35 to 40 to the gallon. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, that's where it all comes in, isn't it? It, uh, is. it looks fantastic. It's very clean in there as well. Do you Thank take you quite much. a pride in that? Uh, I do indeed. Every day. <laughs> do you? Oh, yes. <laughs> Just everywhere. Oh, nice, nice. Well, it looks amazing. Now, if we have a wonder along, you've also done some stuff inside the car I as have. well. What have we got? Uh, these seats obviously aren't standard. Yes, I've got uh, rally seats, uh, recliners, not the full. Uh, Non-recliner, yeah, that's I like a bit of comfort. That's it. Uh, the gear knob, full anodized gear knob, door pins, and Nick's floor pans. Ah, right, yeah, very, very nice indeed as well. I see you got a boost gauge down there. I have as well. indeed, yeah. 
Well, that's just, it's lovely. And like you say, you're not going to go for much more modification on the body. On the body, it's going, I'm going to lower it again. It's going down another 20 mil lower. Oh, yeah? Yeah. And uh, you're going to be calling it a day there, do you think? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Right, well, just depends it's... how the financial <laughs> part of it goes. How much have you spent on this? Uh, I wouldn't like to say, to be honest. Really, is it? Yeah, it's quite a lot. Yeah. The engine conversion was three thousand nine hundred pound. Is this the first car you've gone to town on? It of? is, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, that's beautiful. Two great cars there. I'm sure you'll agree. Both going for the Euro look, but uh, Nick and Nino are in the same club, and uh, Dave and Nino are going to come and join us. We're going to have a chat about the club now. That's right. Come and take a seat. Right, so, I mean, you both own Volkswagens. Is that it for your club, or do you have no, anything else? No, not at all. We've got a really wide range of cars in the club at the moment. We've got um, mainly R2 uh, and ones like that, but we've got uh, Fords, Peugeots, Vauxhalls. Um, there's quite a lot of Citroëns, actually. Uh, just of any, any kind. Anybody who's really bothered in modifying the car seriously and really wants to do something about it, Come and join our club. So what? you wouldn't turn anybody down, really? Nobody's come at us yet that I've had to turn down, but I shouldn't imagine I would. If they were serious about modifying the car and doing a proper job about it, yeah, come along, enjoy yourself, have a good laugh. Well, you don't seem like the kind of people who sit around a big boardroom and discuss things and have, like, <laughs> debates and that about no, So what kind of no. stuff do you do, then? Uh, usually just meet, like, for instance, main place to meet is, like, just usually at my house, which everybody comes around because I've got a big drive and that. Uh, park on there, everybody's got the cars. Many nights to drive past in these cars jacked up, wheels being tried on other cars to see if they'll fit. Take my bumper <laughs> off, see if it fits on there, and if it does, no doubt that person will go and buy one from the dealers the next day. It's all just stuff like that, just trial and error, see what'll go on and what won't. So it's uh, like a socialising thing everybody sort of talks about, you know, yeah, is yeah. that going to fit on <coughs> mine? Is, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, definitely, definitely. So how easy is it for me to join? Just come to my house on a Friday night. <laughs> that easy. That is it. So there's no money outside. involved or anything. No, like that. no, nothing, nothing at all. Yeah. Nothing at all. Just come along and have a good time. What yeah. about days out? Do you? Uh, I mean, some of the clubs do track days and that sort of thing. Mm. I mean, mainly because there's not. We don't cover like a wide area. It's mainly Sheffield. I like the south of Sheffield. So usually, Rother Valley is a place near Sheffield where a lot of people come from there with the modified cars. That's the usual thing. But we uh, have a lot of. Clubs, we, uh, sorry, not clubs, shows. We're doing a lot of shows this year. We did a few last year. They were really good, really enjoyed them. Uh, like Doncaster and um, uh, GTA International. All the big major shows, Santa Pod. They've all got club stalls there. Like You'll find a, an area dedicated purely for clubs. Um, I think the main ones is um, uh, Performance Nova Group and things like that that have got the main uh, stalls. But we've got one on there. So if you're down there, come down, give us a uh, call. Come and join up. Definitely. <laughs> So is that easy, me coming along and see you at the show and, and join yeah, that way? Yeah, yeah. Get a newsletter and things like that each month and see what's going off in the hey, world of modified not? cars. Why not, indeed. Nick Nino, thanks very much for coming Thank along. Cheers, Thank you. Thanks, Thanks a lot. Cheers. Much. Cheers. So we've got for part one, but come back in part two. We've got another amazing car for you and Lobo. Every now and then, we have to get some old people on. Well, this time, it's not old people. It's a mini. And this year, they're 40 years old. And for me, they're still absolute fun. But let's ask this man here, Mark. Mark, thanks for coming to the show. Hey, thanks. How are you doing? Now, Mark, this really isn't built for speed, is it? I know that. What's no. it built for? This car's built around sound quality. There's 1,500 watts of pure music power inside this car. That comprises of three amplifiers two pieces of headset and 11 speakers. Wow, <laughs> that's a lot of kit. How have you fitted it all in a mini? Uh, that was done over 600 hours with three people all playing a part in it. There's everything inside the car has been gutted and been taken out, refitted, put inside, fitted, listened to, not like, taken out, refitted. And that's been done over about 25 times that. <laughs> So, I mean, you've got loads of controls on here. I mean, are they all needed? Minis are really small. I mean, you can reach it, can't you? Yeah, uh, each control has a different purpose, but these ones really, I just turn the controls for the volume up off that one. I have a voice activator on side here as well. 
And so, so what does the voice activator do? The voice activator can choose your radio stations as well as choosing one of 51 discs that are in the back behind my seat. A 51 disc? Yeah. Behind these uh, lovely seats, I mean, they're not mini, obviously. I've been in minis before. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were very expensive. Where did you nick these out of? <laughs> these are out of a Mark VI Escort, these. Very comfy as well, I would have said. Now, inside the car, apart from the, the install, there's lots of carbon fibre detailing in there. I mean, that must have taken you an absolute age. Yeah, my friend makes mo motorcycle panels out of carbon fibre, and he came to me and said, why don't we kit the car out in carbon fibre? And that's what we've done, everything, what's actually flat inside the car has been done, as well as the speaker pods. And uh, lots of chrome as well, just to finish it off. Yeah, there's, I've spent a lot of money and a lot of time inside the car, although it looks very plush inside. There's a lot of nightmares going on inside this car. That's where you spend most of your time. I don't see why you shouldn't spend time and money on it. How much are we talking? Um, it's about £10,000 from start to finish. That's with no labour costs, that. Bloody hell. I mean, that's enough money to begin with, isn't it? Right. Are you going to talk me through the entire install, how it works? Certainly will, yes. Yeah. Um, starting from the front end of the, the car, we have four speakers in the front, two are tweeters and two are mid-bass. They're directional pointed at the driver for rear centre stage that from the rear side to the front we have rear front stage coming through that's with six speakers in the back with a big speaker at the very back for the base what it does once the boot of the car is sealed the two speakers on the back shelf pump down as the big speaker pumps out and what it does is the airspace inside the car seals the boot and gives you more of a punch so all in total, you get a massive big punch in your face whilst driving along. <laughs> now, they talk about decibels when they're talking about this. How many are you talking? There's approximately 139 decibel inside this car. And a human goes deaf at 140, so it's loud enough. Well, yeah, it's loud enough for me. But you've done this for clarity more than uh, quantity, haven't you? Yeah, because of how many speakers and what sort of amplifiers I've used, I've gone purely for quality. Now, you've got two head units. Uh, that's not right. How many do you yes. want? No, well, one's a head unit and the other one's a digital sound processor. And what it does is it oversamples the music as you're listening, so you can change your sound field wherever you are within the car into, say, a stadium or a recording studio or a concert hall or a, a nightclub once it's done that you can then take it to different graphic equalizer lines which is called a panometric equalizer then they have its own inbuilt ones it also has a natural sound field it also has a dynamic sound field and it also has a neutral sound field as well as doing that you can have speaker position in the car so you can have time alignment so speakers what are far away can come closer so you can have the music and the center stage right at your head that's fabulous. I mean, I've got, to, I've got to be really honest here and say, you're absolutely losing me. I'm more, I prefer my engines, I like to go quick, but I mean, this fascinates me. I've, I mean, can we have a look at the boat? Certainly can. Yeah, yes. and you can talk me through that. Look at this. I really like this. Look at that. It's an exact replica of the car, except for the little tiny red hubs on, the, on it, which he likes. But uh, I think you should go away and have ones put on the car, actually. Right, come on, you're gonna have to talk me through this. Alcantara, or Alcantara, however you want to say it. I can't get it right, I never have. That's uh, Doll's House Velvet. <laughs> it's the next best thing and tenth of the cost. Um, I've done everything inside the boot in a special dynamited material, which sound deadens the car. Now, on top of that, I've put timber inside the car to also shield the sound into the car and then I put the velvet over the top so basically all the boot has come out I've started from nothing and I've built up with three layers of coverings inside the boot to keep to insulate the sound to go forwards not out of the vehicle right so I mean if we're stood outside and you've got it turned up I'm not really going to hear that much is that what you're saying you'd hear very little yeah for 140 decibel you'll possibly hear about 35 decibel outside the car I mean, uh, that'll keep your neighbours happy, I should say. It does, yeah. I never, I never play it at home. <laughs> now, you were telling me before, there's no steel left in. What do you mean about that? Well, everything inside the car, what sits in front of something, has been removed. So the big speaker, what's on the back, that's had all its steel in front of it moved. That's been fitted to a three-quarter MDF board with everything of the front of the speaker removed out of that. Then that's been bolted and glued and 45 screws hold that onto the back of the steel. So physically in front of the speaker, there's a 15 inch gap in front of it by 20 inch tall up and above it. Then as you move up where the eight inch speakers are on the back shelf, the back shelf steel has been completely removed to fit a three quarter inch carbon fiber layered 
MDF shelf with the speakers on. And basically what it does is the car had to be reinforced with the MDF so that when the speaker pulls out and the other speakers pull up, it doesn't flex. So the car is now sealed in the boot compartment. I've got to be uh, chat here and say, will it blow the bloody doors off? It will, yeah, it does often. I can break an air seal around the door when the stereo is on full and you sat outside watching, it's quite funny. <laughs> Do you like me Humphrey Bogart impression there? <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. I don't know what you lot think. Well, it's absolutely fantastic. I am so impressed. And uh, one day I will actually learn what you're talking about and like these nice little install bits as well, just to, uh, they win your points and win your prizes, don't they? Of course they do, yeah. Yeah. Mark, thanks very much for bringing it along. I hope to see you at a few shows and uh, we'll come along and have a look at it actually running. Mark, thanks, thanks. very much for coming. Cheers. Thanks. Cheers. Well, we're on Crail Airfield and we're running a hot hatch day drag race, but there's no really racing involved as such, it's a purely fun day. We've got 18 events this um, summer, running fortnightly through the summer period, um, and hopefully we'll get turnouts like this at each event. Or we can get up to you know a couple of thousand, well that's what we're hoping for this summer anyway. Mostly, well we get Sierras, race cars, um, buggies, classics, you know, whatever you got, bring it along and run it. I'm driving the Race Logic and Blitz Super Demonstrator, 750 horsepower. Slight problem with wheel spin today. Wheel spinning half the length of the, the quarter mile. But once we get some grip, it's good fun. So we've got time for this week. Make sure you're here next week because we've got all this coming up. Ah, uh, next week's powerhouse, 180. No, it's not darts, it's the number of horses that Sad have cruelly packed under the bonnet of their new Cordoba. Dave Greenwood scores a bull with a family favourite. It's not Carol Smiley, it's the Ottinger Passat. And increase your car's thrust, knock yourself unconscious and have a darn good laugh with a three-way fun of nitrous oxide. <laughs>